Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you so much for watching this video. Together we are Abe Delmar. Okay, so as life and Abe would have it, of course, it's no coincidence that as a certain topic of information is brought forward for me to dive into, it begins to open up in many other ways in my awareness and in my life for me to understand it a bit more. So I'm gonna share more with you in today's video, part three, we're going to talk more about Tesla, uh, Nikola Tesla, Atlantis, and free energy. After doing part one and part two, what happened was that the energy of Nikola Tesla actually stepped through one of my conversations with Abe. Um, so Abe describes to me, basically, when any other energy outside of Abe goes or wants to make contact with me, they have to go through Abe first. In this video, I'm not channeling the energy of Nikola Tesla. I'm interpreting what he wants to say through the higher vibrational energy of Abe. So it's like he's talking to Abe, and again, I'm bringing forward the energy and information as Abe, if that makes sense. So Nikola Tesla came through to offer more information to add to this free energy series from his perspective because I think he knew that I was doing this series and he wanted to offer more input because maybe not all the puzzle pieces were put into this video series that I needed to put in. Um, I needed to grasp a little bit more or make it a little bit more robust to share the information. In this video, he brings forward some of his own knowledge that spans into his life in Atlantis even, which was kind of interesting. Um, also, while I was working on this series and I had Tesla come through, what also came through was that I needed to learn more about Tesla and his inventions and his work and what's going on with all of that in current day because I really had no knowledge about Tesla or about his work and his inventions, so I needed to grasp what he was about in order to bring forward the information that he wanted to bring forward for me um, in this video. The next thing I know, when I opened up my Hulu homepage, there at the top was actually this docu-series that I, and I heard Tessa saying, you need to watch this. Uh, so uh, on Hulu, if you're interested, there is this docu-series called The Tesla Files. I guess it was made by the History Channel, so you can, I guess, look at it from either Hulu or the History Channel. Um, and I only got through the first two episodes so far, but it was enough for me to sort of grasp a little bit more and understand a little bit more about his work and bring forward more information in terms of how free energy generation worked and understand what Tesla wanted to relay to me to bring forward. So in this video, I'm going to be reading the transmission that was brought forward. And if you want to read along, I'm going to post it on my website in the description below. Enjoy what came through. Nikola Tesla was not heart-centered, but mind-centered. Atlantean. He existed during the time of Atlantis and brought his knowledge from Atlantis into his life as Nikola Tesla. His mind was Atlantean, but his not absolutely open heart was Lemurian. He wanted to bring free energy to the world and coexist with the natural elements to do so. This desire was Lemurian, but his knowledge in his mind came from Atlantis. His energy was equal in Lemurian and Atlantis, but his mind dominated with the Atlantean knowledge that came forward for him. Tesla wants Jessica to know that, in strong knowledge of technology, he was not balanced in the heart. He was not lonely because he had his work to keep him company. Open, strong knowledge in Tesla opened strong Atlantis energy on the planet. As Tesla became more widely known, Atlantean energy opened more on the planet. Tesla came into the world with the mission to open Atlantean energy on the planet. The reason for this was to start the ascension process. Elements of what came through was a time machine were parts of Tesla's work 
meaning that he invented a time machine, so to speak, but not on purpose, on accident. Time and energy coexist together on your 3D planet. Central to energy is understanding time. And this sort of unfolds a little bit more in my understanding of of what this is trying to say um, as we dive a little bit further. So I asked, why? What, What does this mean? And what came through was, because time on your planet holds knowledge of energy, knowledge of Tesla, meaning going back in time to Tesla's inventions is strong in the ascension process. It's important in the ascension process. Not physically going back in time, but mentally. Reopening Tesla's work, inventions, and knowledge into your society is essential and important in your ascension process to opening into 5D. Opening what you would call the past, the time of Tesla's knowledge on the planet, into your current reality and time right now. I asked, so do you mean that Tesla actually invented a time machine physically, or is it just this idea of going back in time right now, like through the mind? And what came through was that Tesla opened up a portal during his existence for humans on the planet many years later, your current day, to open back up when the time was right. This portal, an energetic time machine, connects current day humanity to the knowledge of Tesla when he was alive on your planet nearly 100 years ago, but also more than 100 years ago because connecting back to Tesla also connects you back to the knowledge of energy that he held from Atlantis many thousands of years ago. And then what came through was that I was energetically opening or entering into a portal to Atlantis, I think through Tesla and his knowledge that was coming through in the transmission. So the next thing that came through was information about Atlantis. So what came through was that Atlantis generated energy through a machine similar to Tesla's machine. In terms of what it was made out of, a few things came through, which included bones was the very first thing that came through. And I think this was about animal bones and it connected to experiments that were made in Atlantis and how they possibly experimented on a lot of animals and maybe a lot of animals lost their lives. Um, Other things in terms of what this um, machine was made out of, um, a crystalline structure came through crystals and water, um, and I saw running water that fell from top to bottom or top to middle, like a waterfall, but running water to generate energy, and a strong metal, and what came through was that it's a, it was a strong metal known in Atlantis, but not known in our current modern day. What came through is that the machine opened electricity throughout the whole civilization of Atlantis. And I can't say specifically what this thing looked like. It had to be big because the information that's coming through is like, um, they're telling me that it was a combination. There was the running water, so water turbines, um, open water source. So they must have been near the ocean or located near a big um, water source. And they're also saying open electricity in the air. I'm seeing storms. So harnessing that open energy in the air, the atmosphere, and also inner earth current. So the high vibrations of inner earth. Tesla was an inventor in Atlantis too. Um, And it was this one big tower. And there were also smaller towers throughout the land of Atlantis. So it was like this bigger tower pinged or communicated or connected with these smaller towers through the electrical current um, to spread or to harvest the energy in some way on a grander, bigger scale. And these smaller towers, I saw that they were these spiral shapes, spiral spires that came up out of the ground and were probably made out of something similar, crystalline structure, crystals, maybe even bones too. 
and I'm putting a picture on the screen in terms of what they sort of looked like when I saw it. And also what came through is that these structures ran above and below the surface of the earth. Natural material needed to be used to harmonize with the earth's vibrations. They said that copper is a natural material available that Tesla used. Tesla says that these Atlanteans were very mind-oriented and focused on the tasks at hand in developing advanced technology and energy at any expense. I think he's referring to the inventors and specifically, I'm guessing, the experiments that they did on animals because animals and animal experiments strongly came through when I was bringing forward this um, the inventions and the experiments and even energy. So maybe they were testing on animals in terms of conducting electricity too. Um, Tesla says that he strongly dislikes who he was at the time of Atlantis, but understands why and how he was the way that he was during his life on Earth as Nikola Tesla. He tried to make up for the lives lost and I'm thinking the animal experiments again, in Atlantis by wanting to save lives as Nikola Tesla through his free energy inventions. He wanted to help others and make the world a better place. He was not able to do that as Nikola Tesla at that time. When Tesla died, some of his premature inventions and knowledge of energy were kept hidden by the government. When Tesla died, he opened a portal, essentially a time machine portal is what came through, so that when the right time came, his knowledge and inventions could be opened and accessed. I asked how, and what came through was through historical knowledge, diving deep, digging for clues. He then brought my attention to the docuseries that I was talking about on Hulu called The Tesla Files, where a group works to bring his inventions back to life and look into what happened to all of his missing files and to try to prove some of his work um, in the modern day. So this is just one example of um, kind of what's going on in terms of bringing Tesla knowledge and his inventions back to life in current day from the past. I asked, but how can this time machine portal be accessed when his files are kept secret? How can we bring forward Tesla knowledge when his files and the information that he had is lost or hidden? And what came through was that his files are not a secret. His knowledge is definitely in certain individuals on your planet. Knowledge of Tesla's inventions and free energy is opening within people on the planet. You do not need his files from the past. The knowledge that some of you holds within carries the same information that will arm you with the knowledge to create and spread free energy throughout the world. Tesla is not reincarnated on the planet at this time, but is working with many of you on the planet energetically in the spirit realm. He's offering you knowledge, information, and ideas. He comes to you in dreams, thoughts, waking moments of clarity. He has been busy, very busy, working with many of you. Open your lost knowledge and open a portal, a time machine, to the past where you can bring free energy and power to your present and future. A group of individuals on your planet are currently working with the energy of Nikola Tesla to bring free energy to the planet. Tesla wants people to know that your current society cannot and will not what came through was time machine jump to the past, meaning that they cannot openly create and access free energy in larger, stronger amounts just yet. Meaning that free energy can be created with the inventions of Tesla right now in smaller waves. However, free energy strong enough 
to power the entire planet will not be made available until when Gaia opens her portals of inner Earth energy found at certain significant points along the equator. This is why the equator has come through for Jessica in energy readings regarding free energy. The equator holds the energy of inner Earth, made more powerful in certain areas or hot spots around the globe on the equator. Two of these hot spots were in the areas where Lemuria and Atlantis used to exist on your planet a very long time ago. When they existed, they were each located at these hot spots on the equator. We spoke about this in part one of this free energy series. If you haven't watched part one, go ahead and watch that video now where I talk about the placement um, according to my own inner intuition and vision and information that's been coming to me regarding the original placements of Lemuria and Atlantis. The next thing that came through was that Tesla is saying that at the time of Atlantis, powerful energy rose from inner Earth. Many of their studies included how to utilize this inner Earth power. They became inner Earth power hungry, and this strong desire to access the innermost heart of Gaia ultimately became their downfall. Inner Earth energy is very strong. At the time of Atlantis, open energy in the atmosphere and inner Earth energy below the surface was strong enough to power their entire city. It opened a light source in the darkness. The strength of inner Earth energy was reflected in the open energy of the atmosphere. And this is when they showed me storms, like lightning storms. And I asked, so does this mean that there were a lot of storms? And what came through was, yes, storms for days. This is because inner Earth energy was open on Earth, meaning outer Earth, not just held within. The towers in Atlantis generated power for the whole land. These towers in Atlantis not only opened energy and power in Atlantis, but opened energy and power throughout the whole world. Lemuria unknowingly benefited from the energy generated in Atlantis through these towers. The electrical current ran through the Earth's ground and opened strongly in the nature in Lemuria. Lemuria did not have any of the towers to generate electricity or energy, but the energy from Atlantis opened up in Lemuria through the ground, through nature. The energy and electrical current running through the ground in Earth powered Lemurian nature, as well as nature all over the world, in a very fascinating way. Bioluminescence in plants and animals shone brightly at night. Crystals opened light. Insects opened light. The ocean opened light. Nighttime was brightly lit in color and wonder at night in Lemuria. The civilization of Lemuria worked with this incredible nature to create technology in harmony with nature meaning that the civilization, the homes, pathways, structures, buildings, they were all built utilizing this bioluminescence from nature. So the cities shone brightly at night, not just in the forests. Everything in Lemuria was able to be powered through this nature, technology, bioluminescence that was generated from the energy from the ground, powered at the source in Atlantis. Atlantis powered the whole world through nature, through the electrical current that runs beneath the surface that connects the entire world. So just to clarify, um, visual energy, meaning seeing how everything is lit up from energy and electricity and power, that was not opened throughout the whole world, but from the strong energy harvested in Atlantis, energy was opened throughout the whole world through nature, through the inner earth current, which connected all things. 
And I think that this electric current in inner Earth that spread out throughout the entire planet could have been utilized and harvested throughout the world if there were civilizations around the world who could create some sort of technology to harness it, like Atlantis was able to. Lemuria worked with um, their own sort of technology, but it was more of a natural approach, I think, using the solar energy, the energy that they knew was coming from the earth, from the ground, through nature, through plants, through animals, through the ocean. So their civilization worked with utilizing that energy in their own way. So it was possible to harness this energy if there were civilizations around the world at that time who knew how to harness it from the earth and from the atmosphere. Atlantis, like we spoke about in part one, existed where Central America and parts of South America exist today. Due to the shifting land masses, the original Atlantis is possibly found somewhere beneath the Atlantic Ocean today. However, like we also spoke about in part one, the equator of the Earth, as well as the energy portals found throughout the planet, do not move over the years. Energy and land masses may shift on and within the Earth, but the equator and the energy portals stay put. The difference is the strength of the energy coming through shifts and changes, so it gets stronger or it gets weaker, um, the energy coming through these portals. We are coming to a time in which the energy of inner earth is strengthening. The equator is where inner earth energy seeps through to the surface. Strong energy portals were found in the original placements of Lemuria and Atlantis, where their civilizations existed on the planet thousands and millions of years ago. These same energy portals will be opening once again, and we are being informed of all of this because this is a way for us as a civilization in current day modern society to utilize the inner earth energy for our benefit. This is a gift provided by Gaia in this ascension process, the opening up of her energy, the strengthening of her energy, for us to open not only the knowledge of Tesla and powering the earth and generation of energy, but for us to open the use of free energy throughout the planet once again. Atlantis created their towers in the area nearby what is now known as Ecuador, where a strong energy portal to inner earth exists is what came through. At the time of Lemuria and Atlantis, there was strong inner earth energy seeping through to the surface. With the fall of Lemuria and Atlantis came the fall of inner earth energy. Inner earth energy dimmed and it went darker and weaker. However, because we are raising in frequency and vibration and ascending to a higher 5D energetic vibration, inner earth energy is powering up, it's strengthening, it's amping up, it's opening, and it's going to be seeping through the surface of the earth through these energy portals in like around the equator in the original placements of two of these hotspot energy portal places being the original placements of Lemuria and Atlantis. The inner vibration of earth is raising and becoming stronger, thus leading to stronger electrical and energetic current that connects all the lands of earth. Because like I was talking about how um, these towers in Atlantis powered Atlantis, that energy ran through the ground, it ran through inner earth to power the entire earth. It powered Lemuria, it powered other lands, I'm sure. Um, but it's because the vibration of inner earth was so high, it could travel these far distances. So what they're saying is that with the higher increase of vibration and frequency within the earth as the inner earth energy strengthens this inner vibration of the earth strengthens once again and it 
allows us the ability to utilize this very high vibration of inner earth to power the earth in the same way that Atlantis and Lemuria would, were powered back then, sort of in that same realm. It's opening us up to utilizing the higher vibrations of inner earth to generate power or to generate free energy to the planet. This is why it's also necessary for us to open up information about Nikola Tesla's inventions of free energy sources. These inventions will gather along with the opening of inner earth energy and heart and will rendezvous together in synchronistic fate together when the time is right. Meaning that the rising vibrations of inner earth, um, the rising frequency of the planet will rendezvous, it will meet with Tesla's rising information and knowledge on the planet in current day society. They will rendezvous and meet together so that they can work together and create this free energy source for the planet in perfect timing, at the right time, at the perfect time when it's meant to open up. Knowledge of Tesla and free energy is opening within many of you on the planet. It will no longer be considered fringe or unruly. It will save many lives and open a civilization on the planet all connected together. Free energy will truly open your hearts and minds to understanding that everything is connected and everything is one. It will also open your hearts and your minds to the true power that the earth has and provides for not only nature, but for the people, the living organisms, and everything that exists on and within the earth um, itself. The earth will become more of the focus of society and civilization and become the forefront of importance in our society. Nikola Tesla needed to open the Atlantean energy on the planet during the time that he existed on Earth many years ago. He needed to open free energy ahead of its time. On a soul level, he knew, going into his experience as Nikola Tesla, that he had a big mission to unload. He knew that his inventions would not be accepted in society and that he would die thinking that he had not made a difference. In his mind, he had knowledge that could save the world, but at the time of his existence on the planet, the world did not need saving. It needed the Atlantean energy to open and begin the ascension process. Tesla needed to open his knowledge and energy into the world at that time, the beginning of the ascension process. This was a hundred or so years ago, because many years later, meaning today, a hundred years later, his knowledge needed to be opened again. Coming into the world at the time that he did, a hundred plus years ago, and opening his energy and knowledge created what came through was a splice in time, a place in time in which his knowledge could be kept safe and accessed in the future, meaning like in current day, when the world needed it. We are at a time when we desire free energy, but not only that, we are at a place in time in which we are opening up in the ascension process to where our hearts and our minds can utilize this energetic portal and retrieve that information from Tesla or that information that Tesla left for us, as well as the information and knowledge that the Atlanteans and the Lemurians and other ancient civilizations left for us. What then came through was that in time is a tesseract, a portal in which you can access many, not places in time, but moments in time. You are raising your frequency to be able to access this time tesseract more easily in your minds. It is all available to you in your minds and your hearts. Open the tesseract of your mind and access all points of your soul memory. Revisit moments in the past that connect you to moments in your future. This example of Tesla and what the past knowledge of Tesla holds for your future is only one example of what inner access to your inner tesseract can do for you and your future. 
New Earth 5D awaits, and knowledge from your past awaits exploration so that you can bring it into your future experience. In terms of what a tesseract is, if you're asking what is a tesseract, a good way to understand it more a little bit better is um, if you've watched the movie A Wrinkle in Time, they sort of play around with this idea of a tesseract um, folding space and time so that you can kind of um, time travel or travel to different dimensions. Um, go ahead and watch that movie if you're curious. I know that Abe wants to bring forward a little bit more information about tesseracts and maybe even how it works in a way that we can conceive it. But I'm going to leave that conversation for another video. Um, but I know that it's going to be an interesting one because they've tied me back to the, the concept being brought forward in A Wrinkle in Time. And I was about to start bringing forward information about tesseracts, but then I kind of got sideswiped to bring forward information about Tesla and this free energy, and then tesseracts came up. So we'll see in a different video what we can bring forward in terms of tesseracts. And finally, since I had Tesla on the line, I wanted to ask him about 369, the significance of these numbers. So I asked him, what is the significance of the numbers 369? And what came through was um, Abe said that Tesla says that the wane of the moon is definitely strong in the collective right now. Many are resting their energy, preparing for the next stage of the ascension. Um, so this means uh, we had the super blood wolf moon on January 20th and 21st. Right now is January 29th that I'm doing this recording. And so we're in the waning phase of the moon after the super blood wolf moon. And I think Tesla is just making this observation and bringing this to our attention. Um, and he says preparing for the next stage of the ascension. And this coincides with the information that I brought forward in my video that I did a reading for the super blood wolf moon in terms of how the lunar eclipse, the super blood wolf moon, sort of was this marker in ending one phase or one stage of the ascension and opening up into a new stage of the ascension. Um, if you haven't yet watched that video, go ahead and watch that video if you want to learn more about this new stage of the ascension. But like Tesla says, many are resting their energy right now. We're in this waning moon phase after the super blood wolf moon. So a lot of people are resting their energy to prepare for the next stage or the next phase of the ascension process. He says it's not in everyone, but in many people. 369 is very much like the energy that you see playing out on your planet. Intense energy opens a higher number of nine. Lower, quieter energy opens a lower number of three. And middle energy opens the middle number of six. It opens a strong energy flow of weak, middle, and then a wall of strong energy. The significance of three, six, nine is that it opens you to the flow of energy in the open atmosphere as well as anywhere around you. It is the rise and fall of nature. It is the energetic pattern to all things. Then they showed me a vision of waves in the ocean. So when I used to surf, I found that waves came in sets of three. And what they're showing me is this first set or the first wave being the smallest, and then the next wave being the middle strength wave, and then the third wave being the biggest wave in the set, three, six, nine. It's about energy. He goes on to say that energy works in a similar way. Tesla says that he integrated a way to utilize the open energy of nature. He did not know about the significance of 369 until this energy started opening up in his inventions. He found that energy waves were much like the waves of your ocean, and that energy waves would lose strength in pulses of three. The first energy wave was the weakest, the second energy wave was mid-strength, and the third wave was the strongest. 
then the energy would return back to the weakest wave, sets of three. It's at this time that Tesla stepped forward to sort of express his gratitude. He said that he feels honored that I was asking these questions and inquiring about 369 from Tesla's point of view. I then asked, so how did Tesla utilize the 369? And what came through is that Tesla says that when he pieced together the information about 369, he realized that it was everything around him. I asked, what exactly is 369? And what came through is that 369 is the recognition of God source within. It is the energy signature and heartbeat of God. It occurs and can be found in everything in nature. It is the infiniteness of everything, a continuous and continual spiral of energy. This energy cannot be changed. Tesla found that this energy was malleable, but yet it stayed the same, meaning that he could harness it in a way that worked for him, but yet the laws of 369 stayed the same weak, middle, strong. When Tesla began working with the laws of 369, knowledge of the universe opened for him. He understood the heartbeat in wherever he was, the heartbeat of God. He would tap into that heartbeat and open strong energy. He was pollinating the heartbeat of God everywhere that he tapped into the energy of nature. Tapping into the heartbeat of God was not easy. It opened many challenges. It caused many hindrances from other people. Every strong heartbeat that was opened, opened God on the planet. Not in a religious way, but in a way in which each person could come to know God in an open, personal way. Knowing God or source in the heart, and knowing that in each person, was God or source. Then what came through is that Tesla had the ability to open God or source and a rapid ascension on the planet, but that timeline did not come to pass. The collective energy on the planet was not ready for the strong energy of Tesla. I asked, was that the plan for Tesla to incarnate and open up God on the planet and open up a rapid ascension? And what came through is no. The Galactic Council knew that Earth was not ready for a rapid ascension. Gaia, Earth, made it clear that she wanted to take the life on her, with her, into the new dimension and higher frequency. So a plan was made to create moments in time to access when the time was right, like what we spoke about earlier with the Tesseract. I asked, but why? Why create these moments in the past? Why not just open people up to all of this, you know, the inventions, the knowledge, as we get there? For example, why can't we have, or why didn't we have someone like Tesla open up right now as we are opening up to the energy? And, and have someone create these inventions right now. And what came through was because Earth in present day 3D would not have been able to utilize the inner Earth energy as strongly as Tesla could when he was alive. The inner Earth energy is much weaker now than it was when Tesla was alive. The frequency of inner Earth that Tesla worked with was much higher and stronger. Within the past 100 years, energy frequency and vibration on and within the planet has weakened. Duality on the planet, poison in the ground, poison in the air, lower vibrational animals in the food supply, lower vibrations all around on your planet are contributing to an energy that is held in a very low hanging, low vibrational, dark cloud. Energy on your planet in current day is not the same as when Tesla was alive. You would not have access to the same powerful energy source of inner earth vibration that he did over 100 years ago. 
This is why the tesseract of the mind is important for you to go back in time to access the knowledge held in time and bring it to your forefront as your earth begins to move and open into the higher vibrations where you can actually utilize all of this information and bring it to life. You will not need to figure out how to work with this new higher vibrational world. You already have access to knowledge of how to work with and utilize its energy right off the bat through your own inner lost knowledge. Tesla says that his gift to humanity is not lost. It is there to be found. The Heart Opening Collective will embrace his work and integrate his knowledge and energy in the future. There is much to be thankful for in your past. Find truth in your past, and you will find truth in your future. Abe in oneness and Nikola Tesla in gratitude is complete. I want to make a quick note before I close out in terms of the information being brought forward regarding Tesla, regarding Ecuador, and the building of free energy. The information that I'm receiving in this free energy series seems to be a little bit far in advance, but we're kind of on that highest timeline or we're being presented with this information to put us on this highest timeline towards receiving this free energy um, or integrating this free energy in our future. So even though this may be, I'm seeing sort of five to 10 years out into the future um, regarding these things sort of tying together and connecting for us, I think we need to, the reason why this information is coming through strongly for me right now to present it is for us to start taking these smaller actions to set us on that chain reaction um, in order to make something like this happen for our society, for our planet, um, and getting us onto that timeline in the ascension process to integrate free energy. Um, that's what I'm strongly feeling at this moment. So it's taking those baby steps right now in, in terms of setting that chain reaction off, you know, sending love into the earth, opening inner earth heart and energy so that it can start um, bringing forward more of that onto the surface, into our atmosphere and getting that ball rolling. Um, thank you so much for listening to this video and this video series. I do want to possibly do a and a video follow-up of this video series where I can address some of your questions. So if you do have any questions regarding Tesla or anything about free energy, go ahead and leave them in the comments to this video. Um, I'm also asking my Facebook group to leave comments or questions that they want to ask. So look out for that video. Thank you so much again for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.